of God. We worship you. You're the image of the invisible God, bodily manifested in the flesh. Lord, we exalt your name, O oh God. We magnify you. Hallelujah to King Jesus. You're the rock of ages, the spiritual rock that we drink of. The rock of offense even to our enemies. You're the rock, the place beside the Father where we can hide and see the glory of God. Lord, we exalt your name, O oh God. We magnify you, Lord Jesus. You're the way, the truth, and the life. No one coming to the Father but through you. Father, we worship you. You are all this of the ocean, saying this far, they can come and no further. Lord, you are awesome. Awesome is your name. Mighty is your power. Great is your faithfulness, O oh God. Your faithfulness reaches even unto the sky. Father, we worship you. We were created to show forth your praise. We were created to give you praise. We were created to worship you, O oh God. Oh, may we worship you in spirit and in truth. May our soul begin to cry out in worship. May our spirit begin to rise up to worship King Jesus. Be magnified. Oh, come on, worship him, worship him, worship him, worship him. Worship him, worship him, worship him. Worship King Jesus. Worship King Jesus. Father, we worship you. Bless his name, bless his name. He is God and God alone. He is God and God alone. Bless his name. Exalt him, exalt him, exalt him, exalt him. Thank you, Jesus. Worship him. Creator of the universe. Creator. 
creator of the universe, we exalt you. Wonderful counselor, everlasting father, the prince of peace, the eternal rock of ages, the king of glory. You're the king of kings, you're the lord of lords, you're Jehovah Almighty, our healer, our deliverer, our restorer, our provider, our creator. The day star, our porter, that molds us to his image. Father, we worship you. The I am that I am. The lion from the tribe of Judah. Our soon coming king. Worthy of my praises today. Alpha, Omega. says those that worship the Lord must worship him in spirit and in truth. Hallelujah. So when we begin to worship him from the death of our soul, when our hearts just worship him, oh, you can feel his presence come. Amen. Hallelujah. You know, sometimes when I'm praying, and I'm sure some of you will probably have the same kind of experience. You find out that the presence of the Lord kind of stands by waiting again for your heart to come back to him. That's why the enemy loves to distract you when you worship. Because he knows that God actually sees your heart, sees what is in your mind, sees what is in your spirit, sees what is in your soul. like we're digging deeper and it's just it's beautiful amen it's beautiful sometimes we 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 look at each other and say man there's such a joy hallelujah and it's beautiful when you can just worship god with a freedom in your heart and <coughs> it's freedom in your spirit and no drama <laughs> you're so saying and it's just really god's been like I said, the hand of God has really just been on us as we pray and what's been just giving us, you know, revelations and revelations that he's with us and he's coming. So, amen. And we're very happy with about that. And amen. But, and I've been sharing it with um, my, my prayer. Um, partners and just say well. Apostle Paul prayed. Apostle Paul prayed a prayer for the Ephesian church. Apostle Paul prayed a prayer for the Ephesian church. Ephesians chapter 3. You see, the word that the Lord gave me for the year on New Year's Day to January, I was, for two days, I was knocked out. I could not. My body was weak. I was drained. I couldn't stand. As, uh, for two days, I couldn't function. And then on the third, I was like, I, I guess I'm sitting down just sitting there in that, 
You know, sometimes when you have an encounter and you, the presence of God meets you, it's, um, the, the, it's so strong that your mortal body can't handle it, you know. Because I remember I was, on the New Year's Day, I was lying down and praying in the Holy Ghost and sending texts out for Happy New Year. And then I started feeling the presence of God come over me. I dropped my phone. I wrapped myself in the bed, cover my head, you know. But there's something he said that was pregnant. He said, tell my people to ask me for spiritual strength. And I will strengthen them. Tell them to ask me for the anointing to do the work of the evangelist. There are a lot of us, we're talking to our family members, they are not hearing. He said, we should ask him for the anointing to do the work of the evangelist. Amen. So, I, I am sitting down. So, this has been two days. I can barely get up. Then it, I think the Holy Spirit just reminded me, because it just dropped in my spirit, that the Lord says you ask for spiritual strength. So, I started crying out. For, I said, Father, strengthen my spirit, man. Strengthen me, oh God. Father, strengthen me. Year of the rumblings, the natural disasters. And it's already started. Unprecedented natural disasters. Talking right now, within the two days, it already started. In California, there are floods that have not happened in California since the 1800s. Tornadoes happening in Atlanta that are unprecedented. It is just the beginning. The rumblings, earthquakes in diverse places, it's not going to be easy. This year is going to be a year of natural disasters. It's not going to be easy. But God said he will preserve his people. Amen. So we need to, if we don't have, if we don't have spiritual strength, you'll be overcome. You'll be overcome with fear. Right now, many things are opening. Many things are being exposed. I've never met our spirit. Many of us don't understand anything in our spirit. You only know that your spirit is really weak. Because most of the time when you go to bed, you get like really horrible dreams because your spirit man is weak. When you go to sleep, your spirit man jumps up, start hanging around all over the world. But because they are your spirit man is weak, they get beat up all the time. And some of the time, your spirit ma- you don't even know that you're dreaming because you don't see it because you're blinded in the spirit. If you're blinded in the spirit, then you don't see your dreams. And that's even worse because you, you, you get up in the morning drained and feeling funny and you don't know what happened to you. You just see people that are spiritually blind. They just go around this world as if there's just a veil over their minds and their soul, you know. So Ephesians chapter, your mind, which is your thinking, your emotions, and your will. It's from the soulish realm that you make decisions. It's from the soulish realm that you get emotionally discombobulated. It's from the soulish realm that you get you 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 get all the highs and lows. God never expected any of us to run our lives from the soulish realm. I had a, a family visit me this weekend, beautiful, and the, the wife said, "Oh, I don't think God is going to do that." I was like, "Do what?" He said he doesn't, she doesn't think, oh, she, I, I don't think God's just going to let Christians die. I was like, yes, he is. He is going to let Christians die. I don't think God is going to do that. I said, no, he will. I'm telling you, God will crush. They're like, oh, well, God is loves, this. God hates sin, but he loves the sinner. Guys, it is not sin that is going to go to hell. It is not sin that the devil is going to be beating up. It is the sinner. All that stuff is doctrinal programming. It's this Jesuit religion that they gave us so that people don't truly repent and turn to God. Because they know that if we know the truth, we will repent and give our hearts to God. If the living knew what the dead know, they will stop living their life stupidly. God is going to cross sin, crush the sinner. I mean, when... See, when this guy described this uh, 
this this if we don't accept the blood of Jesus and we don't accept what it is that the Lord Jesus died on the cross for, we will be crushed with a complete, total, dynamous wrath of God. We have to accept grace. Accepting grace means you turn away from your wicked ways and you submit your life to Christ. That is the way that God satisfies his justice. The love of God says, I'm a just God. I would punish sin with everything. I would, I would, I would, um, God says he will reward good. <laughs> everything is legal. The devil is bringing the word of God, the law. Everything is the law. The devil is bringing the law. God is bringing the law. Jesus is bringing the law. Everything is the law. When you, once you cross over, there's no more grace. It's the law. Everything is the law. <laughs> they were like, you look at the, pull up the word of God and look at your life by the word, by the law, by what you did, by what you didn't do, by, you know what I'm saying? The only way God satisfies his justice is the blood. Was placed upon him. Listen, recently God gave me a revelation about the chastisement of our peace. Do you know how many times things happen to you that just put you in it, <laughs> keep you discombobulated? Maybe you have an argument with somebody and you don't feel good about it, or maybe it's you're quarreling at home with your husband, or maybe you're sick and your body is everything, or you ate some bad food and your system is... <laughs> what the chastisement, that means any craziness that can happen to you, whether it's on the spiritual level, whether it's the level of your spirit man, the level of your soul, or the level of your body, the chastisement of our peace, anchor in your body, it was laid upon the Lord Jesus. You don't have to deal with it. You just have to actually take it off you and put it back on the Lord Jesus. But if you don't know that, then you accept it and you're going around. Your life is all crazy and discombobulated. When you could have peace. Oh, how what peace we often forfeit. What needless pain we bear. Because we don't take it to the Lord in prayer. I can actually live in peace despite the whole craziness around my world. And it's such a beautiful place to be. Some family member will do something crazy and you're in rancor for days. You think about it. Every time you think about it, you go like, Ugh. these days, I'll just tell Pastor Angelina, I said, mm. I said, my times are in God's hands. The chastisement of my peace was placed upon the Lord Jesus already. I am not dealing with this. And I tell you what, it actually works. Or because you see, sometimes you, you, you have a disagreement or, or with somebody, and then as you walk away, your whole system is discombobulated. Your whole system, you, 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 you're disturbed. You know? You're totally disturbed. And you're wondering, you don't realize that the devil is standing there going, look at you, look at what happened to you. I mean, how could I do that to you? Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? The devil is yucking, yucking, yucking in your mind, in your soul, and you're just totally disturbed. But guess what? You just turn it to the dark side. Ugh, I don't have to deal with that. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. By his stripes were healed. Psalm 103 even said, bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Who forgives all our iniquities and heals all our diseases. Do you know how many of us go around with many, many diseases carrying guys because we have just not connected to the healing power of God? I'm beginning to find out that if you're sick, you can actually run into the peace of the Lord. Not only that, you can actually tell the devil that, no. You see this sickness? It was already nailed to the cross several thousands of years ago. And I don't have to deal with it. D-I-R-O-T. Dirt. Soil. Dust. We spend most of our time concerned about dirt. Pretty dirt. 
physical dirt, short dirt, fat dirt, skinny dirt, dirt, smart dirt, black dirt, white. A week later, there's no difference whether it was Chinese, black, white, or anything else. We're busy struggling about, oh, yeah, I'm black, I'm white, I'm this, I'm black. Dirt. It's dirt. We paint the dirt, we pluck the eyebrows of the dirt, dirt. We beautify the dirt. We spend a lot of time trying to please dirt. It's dirt. And dirt wants you to go to hell. If you say, pray, dirt says, I want to sleep. <coughs> dirt. We feed it, spend our money on it, do all kinds of stuff on dirt. And we fail to build our spiritual strength. We go to the gym, we walk out and build muscles, dirt. You'll be very muscular, six-pack dirt. We don't build our spirit. This year in my life, as I was saying, the other day, I want to be run by the spirit. I want to walk in the spirit. And when I mean by run by the spirit is that I want to do things from my spirit. I want my spirit to be what runs my life. Hallelujah. I don't want to do things because of the way my dirt feels. I don't want to do things from my soulish realm. I really want to be run by the spirit. What I'm saying, if people are preaching out of hurt, and they are preaching, and the preaching is coming through that hurt, and what is coming to the people is corrupted today. Your pastor is busy spewing out something out of him because maybe he quarreled with his wife at home. And then now he's spewing out about how women should act and everything. And people in the church are going, huh? <laughs> he's not preaching out of his spirit. He's not preaching out of the spirit of God. He's preaching out of his heart. And many of us go through life operating out of our heart. Sometimes years and years of hurt, and we just live our whole life coming through that vile, that bitterness in us. It's time to dump it. Do you know what I'm saying? We just live through that van was ex a way out. I should say me, I should repent. That means you're trying to tell me that the job was a sin. The Bible says that you're the temple of the living God. If you're going to bring something to corrupt, you're going to take something that's going to corrupt the temple of the living God is something you need to repent. Only repentance bring mercy and regeneration. Our spirit man right now can regenerate us. It can, re it can, it can re and let me explain something. A lot of us are trying to minister. I, I don't know. God, Holy Spirit, help me to explain this so that they can hear what I'm saying. Disjointed. Our spirit man is weak. So you find it. Back to Ephesians 3. Verse 16. That he will grant you, according to the riches of his glory, to be strengthened with might by his spirit in your inner man. That Christ would dwell in your hearts by faith. A lot of us do not have Christ in our heart. We don't have, we don't believe what the Lord Jesus did for us. When you don't have Christ in your heart by faith, you tend to live your life through dirt. When things happen to you, your first response is to handle it in your soulish realm, the way you think, which is your soulish realm, and what you can do. I don't want to deal with it. I can't keep it. It's gone. When So even when I deal with stressful situations, when I deal with, you know, what I, and it's just, I can't tell you, it's not something that I could have done in my own strength. It's just something God did for me and I'm so thankful. God, there's nothing like being bitter. There's nothing like carrying rancor for a few days. That is the issue about the chastisement of your peace. It's not that you will not have disagreement. The Bible says, it's not that you can be angry. The Bible says, be angry but sin not. And don't let the day go down on your anger. Hallelujah. 
when they talk about being rooted and grounded in love, people's idea of love is very twisted. Sometimes they call love that phileo thing that people do when they want to take you to do something for them. Sometimes they call love that thing. Love means you must support me even when I'm doing evil. That is not love. In fact, love is telling somebody this stuff that you're doing can take you to hell. That is greater love. If you see your child running around and you see a snake chasing your child, you see your child playing with a serpent, you're not gonna come there. You're not gonna come there and say, No, let me not yell at her because you know, yell at him because well, I'm I love. And a lot of us do that. We see our children playing with serpents, we see our family friends playing with serpents, and we don't say anything because we don't want them to be offended. Is that love? We'll be able to comprehend verse eighteen, we'll be able to comprehend with all the sins. What is the breath? the length, the depth, and the height. That God wants us to comprehend the... Br- the other day I was reading this thing. I said, Father, I don't understand. I don't comprehend the breadth, the length, the height, the depth of your love, of, of you, of you, of what you've done for me. I don't understand it. And I want to understand it. And then it becomes in charge of your whole life. Oh, how God, how we need for God to strengthen our spirit more. That should be your cry this year. Strengthen me, oh God, with might by your spirit in my inner man. Strengthen my spirit, man. That I would know you so that I can be filled with the fullness of God. A lot of us are filled with worldly stuff. A lot of us are filled with, you know, worldly desires. A lot of us are filled with fleshy desires. A lot of us are filled with anger and rebellion and all kinds of stuff. A lot of us are filled with purposes and plans in our lives that have no, God doesn't have anything to do with it. A lot of us live our lives based on how we feel, how we feel, what makes us feel good about ourselves. Oh Lord, you find out that the things that would take down many people, you would stand. When you're strengthening your inner man and your inner man runs your life, all those worldly fleshy desires will leave you. Those worldly fleshy desires that will take you to hell, they would leave you because you will be run by the spirit. A lot of us are trying to live holy in our flesh. We're trying very hard to do the right thing. When you, your spirit man runs it, you're not trying to do the right thing. You don't have desire to do wrong. Hi, did somebody hear me? When you get run by your spirit, when your spirit man is in charge, you're not going around thinking, I don't want to drink, I don't want to smoke, I don't want to go to that place because I think, no, you don't have desire for it. All those worldly, fleshy desires leaves you. If you're still sitting around and you have worldly, fleshy desires, you are run by the world. Why did I? People were, people were terrified. People were crooks. People were, really? People were terrified. Did God ever say we should live our life by fear? <gasps> oh, people were crooks. People were, you, you did not trust God to heal you, so you were scared to die. You did not trust God to provide for you, so you went and got corrupted so that you can work. You did not trust God to sort out things in your family, so you did stuff so that you can be with your children or you can go visit your grandchildren or go visit your grandmother. You did not. You know what I'm saying? Why? You see, if you go into the book of Revelation, the Bible always talks, God gave us a lot in Revelation 2 and 3. But what the Lord always kept saying is what? He that overcomes. We are in the time that the only person that will survive is if you overcome. Asking to fulfill the lust of your desires. You know what I'm saying? You're not asking, oh God, I need money to, to, to um, further your kingdom. You're asking, oh, I need money to be cool. And if we have years and years and years of programming, oh, God will bless you, God will bless you, God will bless you. The, in many people's life, the symbol of God's blessing is money. Are you kidding me? The devil can give you money. The devil can give you so much money you can't walk. The, the richest people in this world are not Christian. They are not even saved. If this world can give you all kinds of stuff. All kinds of trinkets, all kinds of you know toys and cars and stuff. The devil can give you that. 
He said, we are asking our not receiving. Even the things that you're doing that you think is right, when you connect to your spirit man and you start allowing the spirit of God to run through your spirit man, you find out that all the rights in your brain gets rewrited. <laughs> all the rights in your attitude gets rewrited. All the rights in your mind gets rewrited. Most of us want to live in our soulish realm, prideful and puffed up and arguing and blah, blah. But God is saying, come to my spirit. Come back, my daughter. Come back. Come to the place where I saved you. God did not save your soul when you got saved. He saved your spirit. Come to that place of inner connection with me. When you come to the place of inner connection with the Lord, everything else falls into place. Of your glory, that you will strengthen me with might by your spirit in my inner man. Say, Lord Jesus, according to the riches of your glory, that you will strengthen me with might by your spirit in my inner man, that Christ will dwell in my heart by faith, that I'll be rooted and grounded in love, that I'll be able to comprehend with all the sins what is the breadth, the length, the depth, and the height that I will know the love of Christ right. by your spirit in my inner man. Father, strengthen me. Strengthen me, O God. Strengthen me, Father. Strengthen me, Spirit of the living God, with might, with might, O God, that my spirit man will receive power, will receive might, by your spirit in my inner man, O oh God. And I want you to pray. Say, my spirit man, receive might from the Holy Spirit. My spirit man, be strengthened with might from the Holy Spirit. My spirit man, receive spiritual strength. Receive might. Receive spiritual strength from the Holy Spirit. Oh God, strengthen me. Oh God, my spirit man, receive strength. My spirit man, receive strength in the name of Jesus. Spirit in my mind, come out, come out, come out, come out, come out, come out and die in the name of Jesus. Anything resisting God in this environment. Anything resisting God on this Bethel ranch. Anything resisting God in this ministry. Father, that your angels will chase them away from this place in the name of Jesus. Anything resisting the power of God, the glory of God. Resisting the visions that God has given us in this place. Oh, let the fire of God consume them in the name of Jesus. Anything resisting God. Anything resisting God in our lives. My God and my Father, let the fire fire of God, consume them in the name of Jesus. Oh, consume them right now in the name of God. Holy Ghost on fire, heal my spirit, heal my soul, heal my life. Heal my soul, heal my life. Heal my spirit, heal my soul. Holy Ghost and fire, heal my spirit, heal my soul, heal my life. Holy Ghost and fire, heal my spirit, heal my soul, heal my life. Holy Ghost and fire, heal my spirit, heal my soul, heal my life. Holy Ghost and fire, heal my spirit, heal my soul. I don't hear you guys singing. Holy Ghost. We live in a crazy world. Human beings are crazy. You cannot let human beings disjoint your life. Whoever, who, doesn't matter who they are. You cannot let the chast them chastise your peace. Hallelujah. You cannot let people chastise your peace. That is why it's important sometimes to ask the Lord to heal you. Hallelujah. I tell people sometimes, I said, sometimes we expect things from people that only God can give. 
Hallelujah. Maybe you've gone through a bad marriage. You're hurt. Heal my life. Heal my spirit. Heal my soul. Father, heal my spirit. Heal my soul. Heal my life. Jesus, heal my spirit. Heal my soul. Heal my life. Father, heal have been hurt in relationships hurt in marriage hurts heal our lives there are people that have had bad dreams and the enemy has oppressed them in your dreams and you've had situations where things were injected in your body people slept with you in your dreams and you've just been disjointed in your in your physical just as you feel like stuff has been stolen from you in your dreams the spirit of the living God can heal you. Heal my spirit. Heal my soul. Heal my life. Somebody cry out for healing. Heal my spirit. Heal my life. Father, heal our spirit and soul, Lord. Heal our spirit. Heal our soul. Heal our life. Somebody cry out for healing. that the Spirit of God is here to strengthen you. He's here to heal you. He's here to set you free. He's here to make you whole again. You just got to turn to Him. Say, Lord, I turn to you today. Father, I come, I come, I come into your presence. I come back to you, Lord. I come back to you, Lord. Heal my spirit. My soul, heal my life. Say, Jesus, I come back to you, Lord. Heal, heal us, heal my life. God is doing a new thing in our lives. Oh, the God of glory, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Father, that you will strengthen us with might by your Spirit in our inner man. Strengthen us with might by your Spirit in our inner man. That will be filled with all the fullness of you. That will be filled with all the fullness of you, O oh God. That in this time, in this season, when the enemy is running rampant, that you will heal us. That redeemed you from the Adamic nature. It is the same God that dealt with the corruption that came from Adam. He's the same God. All you have to do is come to him. All you have to do is cry out for mercy. All you have to do is say, oh God, I need mercy, oh God. 
Father, have mercy on us, Lord. Oh, God, have mercy on us, Lord. Father, heal us, Jesus. Heal our spirit. Heal our souls. Heal our lives. There's somebody that is listening and I pray generating Power. Let it flow stream. Let it begin to flow through every cell in your body. Let it flow. Let it go deep into your DNA. Let it go deep into your DNA right now. Let it be a genetic repair. Let it be a genetic repair. Let it be a cellular repair. Let the blood of Jesus, the blood of the everlasting covenant, the blood that speaketh better things than the blood of Abel, let it begin to repair you right now at a cellular level. Oh, Father, let your blood flow. Holy Spirit, flow through us, Lord. Blood of Jesus, flow through us, Lord. Jesus, flow through us. Begin to cast that growth all the way to its roots in the name of Jesus. Let the regenerating Power begin to give you new organs. Let the regenerating power cleanse you right now, purge you completely, and heal you in the name of Jesus. The word of God says the chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes were healed. He forgives all our iniquities and he heals all our diseases. He forgives all our iniquities and he heals. He heals all our diseases. Jesus, 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 heal our spirits, heal our souls, heal our lives. Let the Lord begin to heal us from worldliness and let the world begin to heal us from sin and iniquity. Let the healing balm of Gilead, let, let the power to heal and deliver, let the fire of God, let the blood of Jesus begin to deal the blood that was shed on Calvary. It was not just for salvation, it was for your healing. Healing from that sin nature, healing from iniquity, healing right now from transgressions, healing right now. Oh God, let it be deliverance from transgressions and iniquity, deliverance from worldly and sins and desires that are not godly. Let the Lord begin to change our desires right now and strengthen us with his spirit by might, with his, with, strengthen us with might by his spirit in our inner man that will be run by the spirit and not by the flesh. Oh, let God begin to do a new thing in every one of us listening right now. Father, you're the God of new beginnings. You're the God. You. We bless your name. We exalt you. We magnify your holy name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Bible says he makes all things new. Hallelujah. He makes what? He makes all things new. Hallelujah. We give God praise. Hallelujah. Come on, give a clap for Jesus if you've been touched. If you've been touched today, give a clap for Jesus. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name, amen. Oh, we give God praise. And I want us to take communion. You know, chapter 24. Verse 23, he said, and when they found out his body, this was after the Lord resurrected, they came saying, they had also seen a vision of angels which said that he was alive. As, and a certain of them which were with us went to the sepulchre and found as the women had said, but he was not there. Amen. Now, and he said unto them, oh fools. Okay, let me go back a little bit. Verse 13, Luke 24, verse 13, say, Behold, two of them 
went the same day to a village called Emmaus, which was from Jerusalem about three score furlongs. Hallelujah. That will constrain him to stay with us. Amen. Saying, abide with us, for it is towards evening and the day is fast spent. You know? Hallelujah. We need to constrain the Lord to abide with us because it's towards evening. The day is fast spent. We're in the last days. Hallelujah. And so he tarried with them. And it came to pass as he sat at the death. So as we break bread, our eyes will open in Jesus' name. Father, we sanctify this communion from wherever it was manufactured. We convert it to the blood of Jesus. We convert it to the flesh of the Lord Jesus. Father, you say we should do this in remembrance of you as often as possible. Father, you said, oh what, Lord, that as we break bread, it was the body that was broken on the cross for us, for our healing. As we eat, drink the blood, oh God, let this blood cleanse us, purge us, repair us, and make us new. Father, we sanctify this communion in Jesus' name. Amen. Yeah, Pastor. Yeah, eyes open. Hallelujah. Heal our spirit. Heal our souls. Heal our spirit. Heal our spirit. Heal our souls. Heal our lives. Heal our spirits. Heal our souls. Heal our lives. You got to believe that as you eat the flesh of the Lord Jesus, it will heal you. He will heal you. Hallelujah. This flesh was broken by faith. We eat. We eat the flesh. Hallelujah. Take it, you know, rise up on your feet and by faith, eat the flesh of the Lord Jesus. Amen. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And we his strong healed body, soul, and spirit. And as we drink the blood of Jesus, let the blood raise every downtrodden area of our lives. Let the blood that speaketh better things than the blood of Abel, let this blood begin to speak healing and deliverance and restoration and newness in our lives in the name of Jesus. We drink the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name, amen. The blood that gives me strength from day to day it will never lose its power it reaches to the highest mountains it flows to the lowest and we're going to share the grace with